Welcome to the Fast Mode podcast series. I'm Tara Neil and with me today is Magnus Everbring, CTO of APAC Technology at Ericsson. Ericsson is a leading 5G and next-gen technology vendor for CSPs, partners, enterprises and industries worldwide. For nearly 150 years, the company has been a pioneer in creating technology for communications with its high-performing networks providing connectivity for billions of people every day. At Ericsson, Magnus is responsible for driving technology alignment as well as long-term technology strategies for the Asia-Pacific region. He has been with Ericsson for more than 30 years and has held several senior executive positions within Ericsson R&D, the business units, as well as in customer accounts. Welcome, Magnus. Great to have you on today's episode. Thank you. Pleasure to be here. Thank you. Awesome. Okay, so let's start. Um, you know, today we wanted to talk about, um, you know, a much uh, talked about topic 5G and 6G. But let's look, look at it from the angle of Asia Pack and also all the current updates, the latest updates that we have in this area. So the first one is, um, can you give us a quick overview of the state of um, 5G adoption, especially here in APEC? Mm, thank you. Well, I think um, APEC has a lot to be proud of. Many markets are doing very well in 5G. Some are out very early. Both uh, South Korea and China were out early and have deployed it very widely. India is really a good example. In the now two and a half years since the launch, all major cities are covered and offering very, very good 5G services indeed. Mm -hmm. um, and I think this is an international reference, the scale and the width of the rollout that's been done in India. Mm -hmm. I'm based in Singapore and here from the very start of 5G, um, the operators roll out very quickly. Singtel were fast to go up on the so-called 5G standalone, which is, I think, the correct way of running 5G so that you really can explore all its possibilities. And today, Singtel is one of the absolute foremost 5G operators in the world, having gone the most with business innovation based on the technology abilities that they've deployed in the field. One more example, perhaps, I think Malaysia is worthwhile mentioning. Uh, they have a special setup, a so-called wholesale network, but it's now providing well over 80% population coverage and at speeds which are unprecedented, very, very good in international uh, uh, comparisons. Um, and now being a base for driving digitalization in Malaysia, uh, similar to what's ongoing in India there with your uh, scheme for digital payments, etc. Mm -hmm. Wow, that, that, that sounds amazing. In your opinion, what are some of the factors that have pushed uh, 5G adoption in these areas? Like, one of the major one, two factors that you see has uh, have played a major role? Mm -hmm. I think a key thing is really driving digitalization. Um, there's so much gains for society on the government side, on the consumer side, on the enterprise side. With 5G, we are taking a significant step from earlier generations. Earlier generations have been truly good in its lifetime so yep. yeah. but with 5g now we're taking a step beyond that and i think we're in terms of the marketplace we're also making it able to be suitable for truly for enterprises for government functions a key, key fundamental part here is that the system can offer offer uh, differentiated services so typically when you do internet browsing you have what we call best effort you get what you get, so to say. And when you as a private person browse on the internet, download a web page, that's often good enough, so to say. But let's say you control a car being partially autonomous, partially assisted from the network, and it's driving on a public road. That won't pass. Then you need to have a predictable performance. And that service needs to be in some ways guaranteed. The good thing with 5G is it can offer these services. 
and that will be a benefit for many things. Remotely controlled car maybe is one thing, um, but it's also for benefit for consumers. Let's say you you have a, a, a gaming experience and you want to have a very snappy control when you do this. Well, this network is possible to do that, given that you and the operator agree on the commercial terms for it. But that's on the business innovation side. Key thing here is that the network supports this kind of offerings to the market. And that's now starting to happen in 5G. And I think we have many good companies here in Asia that can start to leverage on this very early. Mm -hmm. Wow, well, th that's really amazing. So expanding on that, um, in your opinion, do you think we have, um, you know, to date, like, like until today, realized the full potential of 5G, of what it can offer? Mm -hmm. Now that we have things like, you know, like what you rightly mentioned, automation, and we have AI, we have Gen AI today, and then we also have this network slicing capability. So do you think we are already reaping the best of, of what 5G has to offer? 5G has a lot more to offer, a lot more. At the early of this, uh, early this year, um, we had some 22% uh, penetration of 5G subscriptions. So the vast majority of subscribers are still not on 5G, and it will take many years. We believe at Ericsson in 2027, um, um, 5G will become the dominant technology. And um, then it's the biggest one, but it will be the biggest one for a good number of years. So a lot more to be done. And in that process, operators will continue to evolve the network. It will be more and more potent as we go along. Mm -hmm. And they will also increase and improve their offerings to the market. The market being consumer services, enterprise services, and the public sector. Just as an example there with the public sector, we now see uh, law enforcement forces uh, starting to use the communication where at the site with many people they always get priority so they can do video back to uh, home base so to say and they can get priority when they need to talk to somebody and get guidance. So services will be improving and it will be ongoing for a very, very long time with 5G. Mm -hmm. So, um, you rightly mentioned about, you know, that we have uh, in this journey come only to a certain extent. We have a lot more opportunities, a lot more benefits that we'll be seeing down the road. But we see that CSP's attention is already shifting to 6G, right? So, um, is there uh, the risk of the industry jumping the gun um, at this point? No, I don't think so. This transition we've had several times now. And what's very important is that there are, let's call it, different streams. What I've just been talking about is reaping the benefits out of 5G, driving your business based on 5G. That's here and now. And that here and now will continue for a good number of years. Mm -hmm. So a lot of focus in the industry will be, have to be, and should be on that. And that's also where the business focus will be for the next good number of years to come. In parallel to that, we have to think ahead and think of what's coming afterwards. And, you know, the mobile industry is very, very large. We have today 8.7 billion mobile subscriptions. Mm -hmm. And, of course, it takes time for individuals to upgrade, for them to get the right kind of device, tariffs, and so on. So over a number of years, we gradually build up the new generation. But what we're doing in the industry today, and that's sort of the buzz that you're referring to, mm -hmm. is that some people who had the task to look into the future are starting the standardization work and see what would be pillars for the future standard. Give and take, it's reasonable to assume, I would argue, that the first step of the standard for 6G could perhaps be ready around 2029 or so. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And after that, products will need to be built, and after that, operators can launch a service, and after that, consumers can start to build new phones, uh, buy new phones that support it. So it's a good number of years before you have a yeah. big volume of that. 
So in that sense, it's parallel processes. And that's ongoing. That's always ongoing. Mm -hmm. Oh, interesting. So, so between now and, you know, like you said, maybe we'll be seeing the first deployments of, um, you know, 6G in 2029. Uh, in between this phase, um, what do you think CSP um, should particularly prioritize? And uh, how is Ericsson supporting that journey? Mm. Well, the standard is evolving, as I mentioned. And uh, in the industry, we talk about 5G advanced. That is hot and cooking now. Mm -hmm. is on the market, the first part of that standard. And then it, next year, next year, it evolves and it increases itself. 5G advanced a lot of number of things um, that extends and enhances the 5G experience. There are a number of things that improves performance even more. Um, we also have support for what we call Internet of Things devices, IoT devices. Yep which, for instance, are used in wearables. The 5G standard there is called REDCap, and that is now on the market. And we even see the first watches coming out that are REDCap assisted. Mm -hmm. Having that support, you can get better experience and new services, etc. So step-by-step -step 5G advanced is coming into our homes. For the common man, maybe it's not well known that it mm -hmm. is, and in a way, maybe it's not the important thing for every consumer to know. The key thing yep. is that you yes. as a consumer enjoy the service that you get. And it is becoming better and better for every day with new advances in 5G and 5G advanced. Mm -hmm. Wow, brilliant. I think we have covered some of the topics, you know, that we wanted to talk about today, 5G and then we have 6G. So um, while we are looking at all this, do you see some other exciting use cases that is more specific to this part of the, of the world that you foresee it's well, worth exploring? Mm, I mean, it, 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 the innovation, business innovation phase in 5G is really ongoing now. And there is then to come up with new services that is then providing something extra for a consumer and enterprise. Mm -hmm. I mentioned I'm based here in Singapore and let me highlight a um, national university hospital where mm -hmm. uh, medical doctors are using XR glasses and 5G connection mm -hmm. to do when they do surgery. Mm -hmm. And it is a fantastic setup where they have a, a digital copy of the patient and as they do the surgery, the XR glasses can overlay pictures so that they, in a more precise way, can undertake the surgery. Mm -hmm. The upside is that the surgery time is less mm -hmm. and quality is up. Mm -hmm. That is to say, mortality rate is down. Mm -hmm. It's a fantastic outcome by being helped and assisted by 5G and using this five days a week in actual operation. Mm -hmm. And those are some unprecedented things, right? Yeah. It, it, and, and this is really groundbreaking. And, mm -hmm. and the good thing is it is in full scale operation um, and it shows off the merits. Similar things we see in other, I say factories, hospital in a way is a factory, although it's a very special yeah. factory. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, we had a conference here in Singapore last week and I, we had a session for, with Enterprise and um, I listened in to um, um, a representative from Hyundai that is using 5G in the factory here in Singapore. And there again they report similar gains by increasing quality, by increasing efficiency, making sure that they are digitalized and connected. So it's a lot about connecting things, connecting people and having a digital record and then using it to your advantage. That's on the government side, enterprise side and even consumer side. Mm -hmm. Wow. So it's amazing, you know, how these, um, you know, plain connectivity technologies like 5G and 6G are unleashing so many, you know, unprecedented use cases and applications that will mm -hmm. facilitate and basically change the way we do things, you know, in, in, in a very radical way, basically. I, I agree, and I think also on, on a very positive note, it opens up, this platform opens up for innovation. Many companies 
who can connect to it, connect to it through one of these IoT devices, can build an application on it, and then add extra value. Mm -hmm. And this is an innovation space that's really starting to happen now. Um, I think um, India is taking a, a great move there by providing 5G systems to 100 universities to upskill people, but also to showcase, showcase to creative minds what this connectivity can give. And now it's really up to come into that innovation phase and use this connectivity and digitalize. Mm -hmm. And that is, well, a, I think, a great potential for any nation that now has 5G, India being one of them, Malaysia, Singapore, and so on. Mm -hmm. Wow, so you know, we can look forward to a lot more updates uh, in this space and uncover all the you know, uh, applications and use cases that, like, like what you mentioned, will um, bring in a lot more innovation you know, to this part of the world. Well, um, I guess, yeah, that brings us to the end of the session. Thank you, Magnus, for joining us today and for sharing uh, with us all these insights. Uh, you know, we really appreciate that. Thank you so much. Pleasure. Thank you. And to everyone tuning in, thank you guys for listening. If you want to learn more, uh, visit www.ericsson.com and follow us for more updates and insights as we continue to uncover the latest in technology and telecommunications. See you in our next session. Bye-bye. <laughs>